This is episode 85 of the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast. Get ready to tune in to stories of average men striving for greatness to become the leaders that are needed in their homes, in their career, and their communities. This is the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the one and only show that brings you real life advice on how to be a better man, whether that's in your family or work, whatever it is to be a better father, better husband. We're here for you. So uh, today's a little different. Uh, You're talking to me only. You're going to hear me only. Today, I'm going to talk to you about five tips to help you finish anything you're doing strong because finishing is the most important part. We got to start, we got to finish. But uh, a lot of times people fizzle out after they start. So it's really near and dear to my heart. I want to talk about that. But first, I want you to understand that probably the best thing you can do now as a man, as a father, is to go plug into the Brotherhood of Fatherhood uh, Facebook group. That's uh, available to you. Go on to Facebook, search the Brotherhood of Fatherhood. You'll see our logo. Make sure you got our logo. If you don't know what our logo looks like, you're listening to the podcast. So check out the podcast art. The logo is there. There's a couple Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast, or excuse me, Brotherhood of Fatherhood groups. None of them are legit like ours. You should see over 3,000 men in there, all talking and sharing very important things in their lives. And it's a great resource for you. So go hop on that. That way you are plugged in, whether you're listening to the podcast or whatever is going on in your life, you're plugged in. Make sure you answer the questions. The email, by the way, the email is just there so we can connect with you and we want to connect with you. So don't get scared off by the email. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. And again, like I said, there's no guest here. I'm a little sad, but that's the season right now. I kind of wanted to use this opportunity to talk to you guys about what's coming up with this podcast, kind of what's happened over the last year where we're where we've been and then where we're going and right up front i just want to tell you this is the last episode episode 85 is the last episode of season two we're going to be hopping into season three in september right now it's august so if you are listening to this way down the road you can just hop right into season three but i wanted you to all to know that there's going to be a month gap between now and the next series of episodes and before i get into the content for today i want to explain why Um, Number one is we started really strong. We started with two episodes a week and life got crazy. You probably do not know the story, but actually because of the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast, my business partner and I, or my podcast partner and I came up with, um, we had a business grow from this podcast. It has nothing to do with uh, this podcast, but it grew from our need to find resources to help us outsource and get all the stuff done that we needed done. So what happened over the last year is that I became extremely busy building a business. And with that, the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast kind of took a second row seat. It's not second row in importance. It's just was I needed to put a lot of time into moving forward with the business. So you may have noticed over the last year, there's usually about two episodes a month, which really sucks. And um if you're an avid listener, you've been listening to this for a long time. If you're brand new, that's not fair to you as the listener. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to pull the stress off from myself and pull the stress off from worrying about those who are looking for a new episode week to week. It's not fair to you. And I, and I understand that. So what I did is I'm pulling the plug. This is the last one for season two. I've already started recording for season three. And so what I'm going to be doing over the next month is recording quite a bit and making sure I have a a solid run of podcast episodes for you moving forward. So we'll get those. So you'll have one a week, every week, you can come to the channel and you'll know you're going to be filled with whatever it is that we got going on. And I'm also working really hard at getting some pretty stellar guests. I've already interviewed and have a podcast lined up for September with my friend, John Seidel. John's wrote an incredible book. I got a pre-release copy and maybe a month ago, I read 
through it, charge through it, which is hard for me. I like audiobooks, and it was uh, it was a PDF actually, so uh, it was printed out. I read the whole thing. It hasn't been released yet, so I felt really honored. And I wasn't thinking that book was actually going to be all that relatable to me. But the book was on is on anxiety and OCD, mostly anxiety because o, uh, OCD is a uh, is usually caused by anxiety. So my friend John has gone through a really incredible um, journey of learning about his own anxiety and how to manage that. And hey, look, if you don't have diagnosed anxiety or some sort of mental illness or um, a bend that way, there's a really good chance that someone in your family has or someone very close to you has. And so I went into this book thinking, yeah, it's just going to be great, but it actually really hit hard. And I learned a ton and I felt very relieved on some of the things that John shares and allows uh, me to feel okay with some things that happen. He also addresses like as being raised in the church, how the church can better prepare itself for um, helping those that are going through heavy anxiety, which is, which is incredible. So he, he addresses some pretty big issues. It's an incredible book. It's hit some number ones, a lot of number one lists on Amazon. It hasn't been released yet. So uh, if you're listening to this before September, it comes out in September, but be watching for that podcast interview with John Seidel. We sit down in his home for an hour and a half and get deep and talk about some things that, in his life and go on Amazon and pre-order that book because you will be so happy you did. So I've already got that done. I'm out and putting out emails and finding more and more um, great people to join me, have conversations about being a father, about being a husband, and about being a leader in the community. So I'm, I'm working really hard and getting some really valuable content for you. And I just need a little time. Um, I have another podcast. Actually, I actually have several other podcasts you can check out, Principles of Growth. That's with a buddy of mine, Matt Shenard, and I do that together. Actually, the content from today is stemming from a from an episode him and I shot this week on, um, you know, it was actually six tips for finishing strong. I've narrowed it down to five, but you can capture that on, or go ahead and check that out on principles of growth podcast. And then I'm launching another podcast. I have not announced the name of that one yet. So I'm going to be diving heavy into the podcast world. And so I really want to load up brotherhood of fatherhood. And here's a plea to you all. Like, look, if you're listening to this and you know, someone you want on this podcast, Sometimes it's hard to get people to understand why they would want to come to a podcast, especially bigger names. So if you have a connection or would like to introduce me to someone, we've had some great people introduced. Um, Vincent Vargas was introduced to me by my friend, Jeff Smith. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been, he's a TV star and he's, he's got a lot of um, kind of famous roots going through. We were able to get him on the podcast. That was because of the connection. So if you have a connection to someone you would love to hear on here, who might bring in more listeners and bring in more men to the brotherhood of fatherhood. I would love for you to help make that connection with me. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is, uh, five tips for finishing strong. Now, before we get into this, you're probably going like, what is this about? Really? What this is about is the fact that anytime we try to improve our lives, we can try to improve ourselves. Typically growth comes from difficult situations from putting yourself in difficult scenarios or doing hard things. It's one reason I go rock at the hardest or hottest time of the day. It literally the other day I waited until I got 110 and then I went out and went on my afternoon rock slash walk. Um, I do that because I want to go out there and when I'm done, when I finish, I'm very accomplished. And so there's a lot of mental and emotional charge that can give you. So doing hard things is really important. It's just, let's, let's go to the most basic way of explaining this. When you go to the gym, you're doing hard things. You're breaking yourself down. You're breaking your muscle down so that it can grow back stronger. I believe in with all my heart that in everything that you do, no matter what you're trying to get better at, you've got to do the hard things. Sometimes that's having a, you know, a really frank conversation with your spouse. Sometimes that's, uh, Disciplining your kids when it hurts, and that's a big one, uh, but that's how growth, your kids' growth will occur. In work, you have to work harder, you have to do more, you have to put in more, you have to put in better in order to grow in the industry you're in, to grow and influence if you're a business owner, to grow within the organization that you are employed by. So it, growth does not come without difficulty. And so what I see a lot and what my friend Matt and I were talking is, 
a lot of times people will start something and they'll quit because they're not prepared for the difficulty, the most difficult part of the journey. And that's the end. Like he, his analogy was when he's going and doing deadlifts and you know, they're hard, but it's not the end of the world. But those last few reps and the last few sets are always really taxing. And a lot of people will give up, but what you don't, they may not realize is that the absolute most muscle growth, the absolute most um, growth to, to gaining uh, making gains is, I guess, as you would say in the gym world, is those last reps. And so we got to, got together and had a great conversation about what are some things that men or anybody for that matter can do to make sure that they finish strong. I also want to recommend two books. If you're feeling motivated and you want to do new things, try new things, maybe it's build a new business, start a side hustle, whatever it is. I have some book recommendations. Uh, John Acoff has <laughs> three books and they're, uh, one is called start. So it's just about the art of getting started. Uh, one is called quitter and then one is called finish. And he has more books than that. John's a hilarious guy, but, um, he has these three books and he's made a real difference in my life. I've always been a starter and, um, I'm learning to be a finisher. And so those are some things you might want to pick up if you're if you're interested in what it takes to do something new, to do a side hustle, to do uh, something greater in your life. So uh, number one that Matt and I came up with was building out a no escape plan. And this came about with me with rucking. Um, I was talking to, to Matt about, I go rucking at the hardest time of the day. It's usually a second workout. And if you don't know what rucking is, it's basically a hike or a walk with a heavy pack on. And so um, it makes the difficulty that much harder. It makes it, you know, more strenuous and it just adds a little more of a mental grind to your head because <laughs> it is harder. So I do that. Um, the last one I did, I believe it was Sunday. I went out when the temperature was 101, the heat index was 110. And so um, that was probably four miles, I believe. Uh, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneeze, excuse me. But um, that was four miles. So the thing that I was thinking about is from the very beginning, when I started doing these routes, these walks or hikes or rocks, whatever you want to call them, I kind of built in a no escape plan. And I think this is a really good idea for a lot of things you do is build in a way that you can't escape. Once you've got started, it's really, really hard to stop. For me, it's doing a route in my rucking that once I'm out there, I have to go all the way to finish. Sure, there's shorter ways home, but there's nothing shy of three miles. So the, by, by the time I hit the place where I might start getting tired, there's no turning back. So in life, if you can build a no escape plan, sometimes that means burning your boats. And if you haven't heard that story about Cortez, you got to look it up. A really great author who talks about that is Andy Andrews. You can look up Cortez or burning the boats on YouTube and watch him talk about that. It's a phenomenal analogy to how when you're wanting to do something, one way to make sure you succeed is to burn your boat. Sometimes that's quit your job. Sometimes that's um, throwing all your chips in is another way of talking about that. So build a no escape plan. That's uh, tip number one. Tip number two, maybe the most impactful working with our brains and the way that we kind of tick behaviorally and emotionally is having accountability. So when you want to do something, accomplish something, the best way to make sure or the best way to ensure that you're actually going to follow through is having accountability. Not too long ago, I was on a podcast and I've always wanted to do cold, um, cold baths or ice baths after a strenuous work. It's, there's so many benefits, boosts testosterone, reduces inflammation, um, all uh, re increases recovery or decreases recovery time, all these great benefits, but I've kind of been scared of it. So what I did is I got mass accountability by when I was a guest on a podcast, I announced that I was going to do ice baths. There's no backing out now because, I, it, um, you know, they, I have that social, that social pressure now to do it. People will ask. So accountability is the number two tip for finishing strong. Uh, number three is another huge one. My friend, Matt is very uh, knowledgeable about this, very passionate about that. And it's know your why. Why are you doing what you're doing at that moment? Now, usually success comes from a lot of small, uh, a lot of small steps and a lot of little, you know, um, forward movement to get to the big movement. So it's kind of hard to keep focus. 
But if you know your why, why you're doing it. Now, let me, let me uh, separate this from goals. Goals are good, but usually there's a why behind your goal. Like, I want to look good naked. That's a goal. The why is, I want to look good for my wife. But really, if I dog in, maybe, maybe my wife and I haven't been real connected lately. This is not true. My wife and I have a great connection, but maybe you haven't had a great connection with your wife. And you know, you've noticed in the past that if you're really taking care of yourself, as shallow as it sounds, maybe she's more attentive to you when you are, you weigh less and you're getting more cut, you look great. So that's more of a why. And maybe like going to the gym, you start going to the gym, your goal is to lose 10 pounds. Why do you want to lose 10 pounds? Usually it's something like, I want to, want to be able to play with my kids. Well, why, what does that have to do with it? I want to be able to actually move better so that I have more energy and I can be around my kids and be more playful and have fun. There you go. That's a why. Okay. So we want to really dig in, just go goals are great, but you want to understand your why write them down, do something. So you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. All right. So number three, that's know your why don't just stop at the goals, go all the way to deep. All right. Number four, this one's important, especially in this day. We have a lot of tools at our hands. This one, number four, is have tools in place. By that, I mean, like for me, it's, it's an app. I have an app. I have two apps, actually, that track everything I do. Now, in my Apple Watch tracks everything, but I don't really care about that. I have things I actually have to hit a check mark that says, I have done this. So for me, the tool is a digital checkoff list. That is a tool that I use to make sure. At the end of the day, my... my um, my phone or my device will say, Hey, you didn't do this. And that's not a really good feeling. And so I use technology as um, a tool for me. Uh, another tool is making sure you have resources like, okay, you're going to rock. Great. You've thought about your why you want to get started. Well, you need to have resources. You need to have good shoes. You need to have water. When you go out, you need to have eaten beforehand. Those are all resources so that you don't get a little ways and have to turn around because you don't have your resources. Have your AirPods um, charged so you have some good stuff to listen to and you don't get distracted and think, oh, my AirPods died. I'm going to turn around and go back home. Those are seriously things that stop people every day. So just get out the door, but make sure you're prepared. Those are some resources that you can have in place. Those are your tools to succeed. So number four, have tools in place. The last one is so incredibly important. I'm not going to get into massive details about how this works, but it's self-talk. So the number five, the fifth tip for finishing strong is getting your self-talk in order. And this is something that takes a lot of work. And one thing that we talk about in, when we're talking about this is soft talk. I learned this from a guy named Mark England. When we have soft talk, it might be like, hey, I might go for a ruck today. Or I, I, I think I'm going to go for a ruck today. Or I should go rucking today. Or, you know, I could ruck today. That's all soft talk. We really want to get this stuff solid in our head because how we speak and how we think will have a very uh, strong determination on what we actually do. So for me in the morning, if I'm going to go for a ruck, I'm in my head. I'm, I am going to ruck today. I am going to finish that project today. I am finishing the project today. I am rucking today instead of I, if I can make time, I, I hope I get to. Those are all soft talks. So another form of soft talk or another form of self-talk is in your head. Nobody's hearing it, but there's stories that you've had in your head forever. Like things that you might say are, I'm not very good at physical things. I don't usually um, last long in physical challenges. I'm not very athletic. Thoughts, when you have thoughts like that, you are basically creating an obstacle for yourself. So even if you've always struggled with doing physical activities, it should not be the way you think. How you think and how you process should be, I am going to do the best I can today in that ruck. I'm going to start with a one mile ruck today. I am going to go exercise. I am going to the gym. I will exercise today. Excuse me. I will exercise today. Those are things that you want to say. So we want to get our, our self-talk and actually our talk out loud 
taken care of. One way to do that is get somebody in your corner, get a coach. I know I say that until my ears, your ears bleed, but get a coach. That's one way. Have a friend and tell them, hey, anytime I say X, Y, or Z, anytime I talk in a way that doesn't um, relate to success, you call me out. Now, I did this with my friend, Josh, Josh, co-host of this podcast. And he, I talked to him about my financial beliefs and I was having a real hard time believing and speaking in a way that I was going to be successful. So anytime I said, well, I, I'm trying really hard to make money or I'm trying really hard to pay off these bills, he would stop me and call me out. He says, can you, can you restate that? Like, and, and, and honestly, it made me really mad. I'm like, Ugh, this is stupid. And he's like, Hey, look, you wanted me to do this. And this is really important to you, which it was. And he was very kind, but also you want to have someone that's willing to do it even when it's not uncomfortable. So for me, it's like, uh, I am going to find, I am, let's see, uh, how can I pay? So I changed it from, I can't afford to how can I afford? So that was some, that's an example from my personal life. That's made a massive difference. So that's it. You guys, number one, build, no, build in no escape plans. Uh, number two, make sure you have people to be accountable for two or, or four, um, announce something live or do a live video. If you want to finish something, those are ways that you can make sure that you have massive accountability. Number three, know your why. Number four, have some tools in place, whether that's apps, make sure you're prepared, whatever it is. Um, make sure you have some, some things in order so that you are set up to succeed. And number five, which you will improve every part of your life is your self-talk and your self-thoughts. All right, guys, that wraps up season two of the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast. We've been at this for 16 or 17 months. It's been an absolute wild ride. We are going to dive into season three. Again, we have John Seidel, which um, I know you may be thinking, oh, that's not really for me. Just trust me. Get on that podcast. Listen to that podcast or that book. I'm not doing it to boost the sales. I'm just telling you that I did it and it gave me a whole new perspective. Like when the Simone Biles thing all came out in the Olympics, my, I, was, I, I had a different point of view on that because him and I had had some very serious conversations about mental health and performance as well as I've read his book. So you'll definitely want to tune in and I hope I have some other really exciting guests lined up. I'm working on that right now. So uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Brotherhood of Fatherhood podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to share it with your friends, your family, and follow us on social media. If you are a father, make sure you join our Facebook group, The Brotherhood of Fatherhood. Hit the subscribe button and tune in next time for more podcasts from The Brotherhood of Fatherhood.